Welcome back everyone, it's Kalen from Kite, the AI Autocomplete. Today we'll go over a technical interview question and solve it in three different ways. We'll start off with a simple solution and gradually get more sophisticated. All of these solutions are technically solving the problem correctly, but each solution is increasingly elegant. Iterating on your solution during a technical interview is a very important skill. This is because it's unlikely you'll land on the most performant solution on your first attempt. So during the interview, make sure to analyze the runtime of each solution and constantly seek ways to reduce computational complexity. These skills will help you find the optimal solution for a problem and impress your interviewer. Today, we'll solve the fine median from data stream problem from LeetCode. In this problem, we need to design a data structure that supports two operations. The first is addNum, which should add an integer number from our data stream to our data structure, and then find median, which should return the median value of all the elements in our data structure. Our first solution will take a brute force approach. Let's create a new class called median finder that supports addNum as well as find median. This will be the starter code for all our solution. We know that the median of an array of numbers is in the middle of the sorted array, or an average of the two middle elements in arrays with an even number of elements. Let's use this idea to construct our brute force solution to this problem. In particular, let's use a list to add all the numbers we have seen so far. Every time we see a new number, we add the number to our list. Now that we have a list of all the elements we've seen, we can sort the list to find the median. We know that if our list has an odd length, the median is the middle element. And if it's an even length, then the median is the average between the two middle elements. Let's run this on an example input to verify our solution. Let's add 5, 6, 3, 7, 12, and 1 to our data structure using add num. Let's print out the result of find median, which we expect to be 5.5. Let's take a deep dive now into the runtime of our brute force solution to see what we can improve on. Since all we do with add num is append a number to a list, it has a big O of 1. On the other hand, find median requires us to sort the list, then use the result to find which elements lie in the middle. Sorting an array has a big O of n log n. So, find median will have a runtime of n log n. For space complexity, the only thing we need to constantly store is the list of seen elements, which has a big O of n. Let's analyze our initial algorithm to see what we could improve on in our next iteration. Because our addNum runs in constant time, there isn't much we can do to improve there. In addition, there's not much we can do to improve our space complexity because we would need all the elements to find the median. However, when we call find median, most of the runtime involves sorting the list of elements we've seen. And each time find median is called, we have to sort the entire list again. So let's see if we can improve on this by not having to sort the entire list again. In particular, when we add an element to our list, let's try to keep our list of seen elements sorted so that we can do a constant lookup for finding the median. We can use binary search to find the index for the correct place to insert our incoming number. After we find the position, we shift all the higher elements by one space so that we can add our new number. Let's now create a helper function that uses binary search to find the index for our new number and insert it into our list. For our binary search, we need to keep track of an upper and a lower bound for our array. We will compare the middle of these bounds to our element. If we see that our element is bigger than the middle element of our bounds, we set the lower bound to the middle plus one. If our element is smaller, we set the upper bound to the middle minus one. We initialize counters for high and low at zero, and we initialize our length array at the length of the input array. And for each new number, we increment length array and either high or low, depending on that value's relationship to the element right in the middle of high and low. While our lower bound is less than our upper bound, we get the middle index, and we see we should change our bounds. In particular, if we see that our number is less than the middle of our subarray, we lower the upper limit to one below the middle. We keep on doing this until we find a middle index such that our number is greater than the middle index minus one element in our scene list and smaller than the middle index. Let's also add an edge case for when the middle index minus one is out of bounds. If our number is not less than the middle of our subarray, we increment our lower bound to one above the middle. We should also add conditions for when we reach the end of the array, at which point we want to return the size of the array. Now, for the addNum function, when we see a new number, we first find the index where it should be inserted using our binary search. 
Then we use Python's list insert to insert the element into our list and shift the higher elements up by one space. When we want to retrieve the median from the scene elements, we can simply return the middle element or the average of the two middle elements depending on whether our array has an odd or even number of elements. Let's try this out using the same example as above. We're going to add 5, 6, 3, 7, 12, and 1 to our data structure using addNum. Let's print out the result of find median, which we expect to be 5.5. Runtime analysis number two. Let's analyze our runtime to see whether we improved on our last iteration and discover what other improvements we could make. When we add a number to our list, we first use a binary search to find the proper index. This binary search has a big O of log n. After we find the index, we need to shift all higher elements by one space, which at worst case has a big O of n. However, now when we want to find the median, all we need to do is a constant amount of work, giving our find median function a big O of 1. Similar to the first case, our space complexity will be in order n because we need all elements to find and insert a new number. Let's see what works well in this iteration and what doesn't. Having direct access to the median element at all times makes it really efficient for us to return the median because it only takes a constant amount of work. However, there's still room for improvement. In particular, when we add a new element to our list, we take order n time, which is fairly slow as we have to shift all the elements greater than the index we found through binary search. In particular, we can improve on our solution by finding a reasonably fast way to add numbers to our data structures. We see that we don't need the entire input sorted, so all we need is a constant way to access the median element. We can do this by separately storing the smaller half of the input and the larger half of the input. To do this, we can use heaps. Before I dive into our third and final solution, I wanted to take a second to talk more about Kite, the AI autocomplete I'm using in this video. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. So if you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free, and you can download it from the link in the description below. Solution number three, using two heaps. Okay, so the most elegant solution to our problem today is we're going to use heaps. We can use two heaps, where one is a max heap to store the smaller half of the numbers in descending order, and the other is a min heap to store the larger half of the numbers in an ascending order. That way, the median value is at the top of both heaps. For our algorithm to work, we need both heaps to be balanced. We know that all numbers in the max heap are smaller than or equal to the top element x, and all numbers in the min heap are larger than or equal to the top element y. So, by taking the average of x and y, we have our median. We can make sure our heaps stay balanced by having balancing steps when we add a new number to our data structure. Let's call our max heap that stores the smaller half of our numbers low, and the min heap that stores the larger half of the numbers high. We can make sure our heaps stay balanced by having balancing steps when we add a new number to our data structure. Let's call our max heap that stores the smaller half of numbers low, and the min heap that stores the larger half of our numbers high. We can use Python's heapq library to construct these heaps. Heapq is only a min heap, but we can insert a negative value to mimic a max heap. Since we may have an odd number of elements, let's allow low to have one more element than high. When we have an even number, both high and low should have the same amount of elements. So when we add a new number, we first add it to low. Now, since low received a new element, we have to balance low and high by removing the largest element from the low and offering it to high. We can do this by using heap pop and heap push from the heap queue library. Let's remember to insert the negative value when moving it from one heap to a properly mimic a max heap in Python. If high has more elements than low after adding one more, we remove the smallest element from high and insert it into low. By having these balancing steps, we make sure that the heaps are balanced, so we are able to find the median in constant time. To get the median, we first need to check if the low has fewer elements than high. 
If it does, this means that we have seen an odd number of elements, so we return the median which will be at the top of the low heap. Otherwise, we have seen an even amount of elements, so we return the average of the tops of both heaps. Let's try this out, again using the same example as above. Now let's break down the runtime analysis of our third and last solution. When we add a number to our list, in the worst case, there are three heap insertions and two heap deletions. Since both of these operations have a big O of log n, the total time of add num is log n. When we look up the median, we know that the two heaps are sorted. So all we need to do is a constant amount of work to determine if we return the top element of the low or the average of the top elements from both heaps. For space complexity, as we only store each element in one of the heaps, we still only store each element in one place, making the space complexity order n. We've now improved the previous runtime by using two heaps to keep track of the larger and smaller halves of our input. Through our runtime analysis of each solution, we were able to significantly improve the runtime of our algorithm, cutting down ad num to log n time and fine median to constant time with linear space complexity. With technical interviews, remember it's unlikely you'll land on the most performant solution on your first try. So make sure to check whether there are any opportunities to refine your solution and make it more computationally optimized. Often, they're more interested in your approach than the destination you land on. I hope this video will help you use big O considerations to iteratively improve your solutions for technical interviews. And finally, don't forget to check out Kite. You can download it in the link below, and we'll see you in the next video.